For 75 years, Argonne National Laboratory has accelerated the science and technology that drive U.S. security and prosperity. To celebrate, we're capturing the stories of the people who made it happen. This is Argonne Voices. Valerie Taylor and Christina Negri are both division directors at the lab. Mathematics and computer science for Valerie, environmental science for Christina. Their respective fields of expertise converge at the intersection of computing and climate change. With supercomputers and artificial intelligence, Valerie's mathematicians help Christina's environmental scientists to build climate change models that allow communities to respond faster and adapt smarter. At the same time, Valerie and Christina's teams also join forces to pursue environmental justice for all. Here's part of their climate conversation. So Valerie, how did you first become interested in math and science? My interest actually was sparked by my father, who is an electrical engineer. And on Saturdays, my father would take us to work with him And they had soldering pots, circuit boards. You know, at first, my father would say, stay away. You know, and to tell a young child to stay away, in my mind, it said, check it out and see if I can play around with it. So my brother, my sister, and myself, we all grew up knowing how to solder, knowing how to put together circuit boards, learning how to read schematics. So I think my father provided that exposure to engineering at a young age. You know, as you were talking, I thought, well, I could have a similar story. My dad was a doctor, so he was a science-oriented person. But what he had is a profound love for nature. He came from a small village in the Alps. And so we would go in the woods and uh, climbing mountains and doing things like that. And that, to me, was probably the most relevant kind of role model and and passion that that gave me that deep passion for the natural world and, and really understanding the process of government. And so that was critical. So Christina, most people now understand the seriousness of climate change, but can you talk a little bit about the sense of urgency and the view from the scientific community? The sense of urgency is palpable and it's here. And I think the broader world is really now seeing all these effects that scientists have been predicting for a long time. It's no surprise, honestly, but not only we are the cause of climate change, we as humans, but also the science is now getting better and better at attribution. So basically connecting the weather today to climate and what is going on in the world. And that is a big step. And pretty much we almost are on an inevitable path toward one and a half degrees centigrade heating of the Earth system, which is only avoidable with tremendously drastic changes that Obviously, it's very hard for the whole world to adopt. Scientists have been urging about making these changes for a long time, and the sense that what you do and what you model is really coming to be a reality is really something that I think every scientist that works in the climate science is really afraid of and worried about. So people generally do not think about association with computing with climate change. And so maybe you can tell a little bit of the story about why, you know, advances in computing are so important, including artificial intelligence and really revolutionizing the way we think about climate models and provide more precise predictions. I think you hit it on the head in terms of being able to provide those predictions such that we can do the analysis of the impact of different decisions that are made about climate. For example, the wildfires and how the wildfires are spreading. Are there ways that we can contain the wildfires? Are there simulations that can help with that? And to address the issues around the impact of the increase in temperature and the dryness of the land, which also fuels the wildfires. When we start to look at the supercomputers and especially exascale computers, We're looking at the ability to do the simulations, to do these predictions much faster. AI gives us the ability to now replace possibly some of the complex computations with what we call surrogate models 
or models that are now driven by data that take one to two orders less time to execute than the complex computations. And so now we're looking at the ability to explore different scenarios in a more efficient way and to do better planning around climate change. And I think it also points to multidisciplinary teams working together because you need the scientists in the climate area working together with computer scientists, with applied mathematicians to actually look at solving these problems. And Christina, there's been an increasing attention on creating an energy and environmental system that is more equitable so that all communities have the tools to cope with the changing climate. Can you talk about the importance of environmental justice? So environmental justice is a big theme these days, and uh, it has been for a while, actually. But obviously, now it's been exacerbated by climate change and the extreme events that we are seeing across the world. But what is environmental justice to begin with? Like here in Chicago, so not so far away from the lab, the difference in economic status of the neighborhoods are all a direct consequence of the redlining that happened back in the 30s, right, where somebody went around trying to understand which loans to give to whom, and uh, they actually had identified each neighborhood based on risk of people being able to pay it off, basically, right? And so those differences persisted and led a lot of the investments in the community, whether it was loans given to homeowners, to infrastructure investments, and to all sorts of things that make a community lively and care for their well-being. So now that we are in this different paradigm of climate change, we find that the people who are the least resilient to the impacts of climate change are those that live in this formerly redlined community and they still have the least tools to survive and thrive under these new events. And so in Chicago, for example, the areas that are more subjected to flooding, for example, are in the South Side, where a mostly African-American community lives. And so the key there is how to make sure that you have enough of an understanding of these situations so that when uh, the city plans for investments in these communities, we do it in an equitable way and so that no one is left behind. This is enabled by very high resolution models that will tell you what the climate will be and being able to compare north side communities and neighborhoods with the south side or the west side and so on, so that the proper investments could be made with the help of people like you guys in the computational sciences, because as we go smaller in size and higher in resolution, it's only about advances in computing that will allow us to drill down at the street level, for example, or the building level, for that matter, to understand where the energy investments will have to have their best chances of being on target and really equitable for everyone. So I really hope we can work more together on this issue. Yes, it's very exciting because we have that project with the Software Defined Sensors, or SAGE, that's looking at outreach to high school students as well as college students developing the software for those sensors as well as the data collection and understanding the impact that this data has in terms of the environment. So it's a great opportunity to make those connections. I agree, not to mention our postdocs who are working on these super high resolution processes that are actually going to understand and put into model the whole convection process. And so basically how big storms happen and also putting together and learning new drought indices. Obviously, droughts are a precursor to fire, among other things, you know, killing our crops and all that. And so just putting smart ways where we can be predictive about things and not just record them when they happen, but know what are the conditions at which certain events will happen is going to be a big advance. So Valerie, thank you so much for this conversation. It's always refreshing to speak with you. I'm really most proud of our collaboration and putting our staff to work together. I think it's a fantastic connection between the two teams. And uh, and thank you for your friendship and for all this nice conversation. I hope I can see you again in person sometime. It was really wonderful to have this conversation. So thank you very much. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Argon Voices is an oral history project recording the stories behind decades of world-changing science at the laboratory. To learn more about Argon's 75th anniversary, visit anl.gov.